We talk about easy and delicious all the time, but today we not only give you easy, we not only give you impressive, but we give you extra delicious because we're making beef ossobuco. Today's video is sponsored by the NCBA, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. You know who they are, boys? They're the beef, it's what's for dinner people. And by the way, I love the fact that they have stuck with that line, one of the greatest marketing lines of all time. But let's get to what we're doing. Beef also buco is a, go how about if I just show you? Stay right there. Beef shank looks like this. Are you impressed? I get a little impressed when I see this kind of stuff, but it comes from the leg, big bone here, and it's a cut that gets worked a lot because it's a part of the animal that's moving. Hence, it's a little tougher. But after what we do to it, it will melt in your mouth. Oh, and we're gonna serve this with creamy roasted garlic, soft polenta with mascarpone. Boom! But these gotta get going because they're gonna take a couple hours of cooking. It's very simple, but it's a couple hours of cooking to get them where we want them. Shall we begin, boys? Is that it? Yeah. Let's go. This is a gorgeous sight. And let me point out one thing. Bone, inside is bone marrow. This is gonna give a richness that you will not believe. What I'm about to do is a little unnecessary. I'm gonna tie them with string to keep them nice. And that's because when I go to present them, put them on the, the platter with the polenta, I want them to be nice. They're gonna be so soft and unctuous when we're done. If the string's not there, they might start falling apart and I don't want that, so. And one little loop around the middle of these guys should keep everybody nice and snug. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I know you know what I'm saying. And repeat, this can go fast. All right, now we'll just cut the ends off. We don't need unnecessary string. And next, we're gonna season them up. Just with kosher salt and pepper, you can be generous. Look, this is a big piece of meat. that's gonna be insanely delicious by the time we're done. I'm telling you, this is the kind of thing that you bring out and people are gonna be, oh my God, what have you made? We'll flip, we'll do the other sides. A little bit more. And now before we put them in the pan that's behind me getting hot, we're gonna give them a little light dusting with flour. That'll help some browning, it'll help our sauce thicken up a bit. And it's this simple. We pick up one of the kids, we give them some of that, we give them some of that, a little edge flour, and we continue. When you're finished at this juncture, off we go to our heating cast iron pan. Then we go with some good oil. Oh, look at that. And now our friends, one, at a time. And we're just looking for some beautiful browning at this point. We're not cooking them. Well, I guess we are, if you're gonna be technical about it, but really it's more browning than anything else. And like every campfire I've ever been to, the smoke somehow has found my face. It's coming right, right at me. It's gonna be good. All right, let's give these kids a turn. Like that. Oh, pretty, pretty. Oh my. Sweet, another minute or so. I know what I'm having for dinner. Swag. All right, let's get these guys out. Wow. Oh, goodness. All right, vegetables go in next. Touch more oil. And then our vegetables, we go with some onion, some carrot. What do you notice about the carrot? Yellow. And orange, yeah. From Thanksgiving. And celery. So we're gonna give this a couple minutes, maybe three or four. Yeah, I know, a couple generally means two. I just went with it. And I want you to notice what I'm cooking on. I mean, yes, a cast iron pan, but the grill. I tell you all the time, a grill is really a stove in an oven that is just outside. Take advantage of it. That's beautiful. All right, time for a little garlic. Make a little landing spot. Right in, a shot of oil. We're gonna let it get fragrant, you know that. You know that. Come on, baby, come on, come on. Then we mix it in. Ah, oh, the smell. I love the smell of cooking garlic in the morning. Okay, a couple other things, close. We'll put in tomato paste. By the way, that was three tablespoons, but don't worry about it, the recipe is below. And this will get stirred through. This will just help deepen the flavor of the whole thing gorgeously. By the way, we've got dueling construction going on. House on one side has got some roofing. House on the other side has got some renovations. Ready for our liquids? We're gonna put in one bottle of dark beer. This is a stout. Two cups of beef broth. Couple tablespoons. Should I talk louder, Max? Yes. Couple tablespoons of soy sauce or soy paste. My preference is paste. We're gonna give this a mix. 
We're going to throw in some thyme sprigs, and then we're going to let this come to a boil. Perfect. That's where you want it. Oh, Chansey has already said how great it smells. Chansey, you just wait. This is getting so much better. Now we take our uh, little friends. Did I say little? I didn't mean little. I meant giant friends. Wow. Look, if you're going to have a beef shank, make it a beef shank. Everybody sits in beautifully. I can kill the heat underneath it. This is unnecessary, but I always feel like the right way to start a slow braise, which is what this is called. I like to put just a little bit of what's underneath on top. It feels like it's the right thing to do. Everybody gets happy. And now, because I don't have a lid for this pan, I'm going to use foil. So I'm gonna take a big double sheet. And yes, this is gonna be hot, but I think I can deal. This now goes into a 400 degree oven for two to two and a half hours until super tender. I have a question. Is the noise that we're hearing right now obvious to you? Is it bothering you? Do you hear that uh, jackhammering going on? <laughs> we're curious. You guys know, we feel the gardeners, the roofing, the whatever. We think more than you, but just curious. Just let us know below. Anyway, so uh, those guys are in the oven and they're very happy. We're gonna serve them on this roasted garlic polenta with mascarpone. It's gonna be stupid good. But we have to roast some garlic first. And you start with the whole bulb like this. They're quite nice looking, aren't they? I love them. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take off about the top third of this thing to explode, to expose all the cloves. To explode the cloves. <laughs> so just cut down like that. You can get rid of this extraneous, useless paper. I mean, I suppose it holds it all together. And then you do this. Then you take your, your head with the exposed cloves. Put it on a double piece of foil. You give it a little zhuzh of olive oil, a little hit of salt and pepper. And then you take your foil, you bring the sides up, and you make this tight little package like this. You want it to steam inside, so you don't want any of the steam coming out. And that will help soften, caramelize, make this the most gorgeous garlic ever that you will want on everything, but especially our polenta. Uh, oh, I forgot. The oven's already at 400. I'm just going to throw this in for 45 minutes and then take it out and we'll look at it. It's like one of those little things fancy restaurants would give you your leftovers to take home in, right? There you go, sir. Your uh, leftover piece of bread. The osobuco is almost ready. Let's make the polenta. Four cups of boiling water, one cup of cornmeal, and we're going to stir as we slowly add the cornmeal because we don't want it to clump and we certainly don't want it to stick. So just do this, take your time. This is cooking, ladies and gentlemen, and we enjoy this. And if you don't enjoy this, turn off right now and go to a restaurant because somebody else should be doing your work. We're stirring all across the bottom of the pot. We're making sure, and the last goes in, three, two, one. Nice. Now, over the next 20-ish minutes, maybe 25, this will thicken. The polenta will become smooth and not uh, gritty anymore. So we can stop this and now turn it down because we don't want this rolling boil. We want it to be a gentle kind of simmer. And when it's at the point that it's perfecto, then we'll add a couple of things that will make it magnificent and we'll serve it with our you know what, our gorgeous, beautifully cooked gargantuan beef shanks. So you don't have to continue stirring the whole time, but I say every five, six minutes or so, come back, give it a few stirs, just to make sure nothing is sticking and it's doing its thing in a most loving way. It's time to make the polenta great, but remember this, somebody could say yes. Yes! Thank you. Hate asking. It's not a rhetorical question, come on. Remember this? Obviously we do. I wanted to hear. <laughs> I like to hear. Stop your swearing. So this is cooled because it's hard to do this when it's not. But watch. <laughs> it's insane the change that happens to garlic when you roast it. 400 degrees, 40 minutes. I want, look, every little bit. This guy, come on. Come on, buddy. There you go. But I can't put it into the polenta quite like that. So let's give it a quick mash to help incorporate. Roasted garlic, best thing ever. So we'll take our roasted garlic. And by the way, you're going, hey Sam, that's like a giant head of it. So I'm gonna start with about half. And if you think it looks like too much, just know that roasted garlic is way sweeter and lovelier. So this will go in our polenta, along with about a quarter of a cup of mascarpone. Just think triple processed 
cream cheese. It's richer, it's thicker, it's very good. And if you didn't have that, could you use regular cream cheese, Max? Yes. Of course you could. We'll put about a quarter of a cup of butter in that, soft butter. We'll get our big spoon. Look at this, this is one of my favorite parts, this meltingness. Oh, everything. Goodness gracious, lads. Look what we have done. This is the perfect foil for what I'm about to bring out. Couple things before we hit it. One will be some picked thyme. Just those little leaves, none of the stalks. Nice pinch of kosher salt and pepper because the polenta is fairly plain even though we've added lovingly to it. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Mother may I. All right. <laughs> Come on now. Somebody say, is it time for the uh, Asabuco? Is it time for the Asabuco? That's a rhetorical question. Of course it's time for the Asabuco. I'm going to go get it right now. All right, it's time. And one, two, and tres. Oh, God. Monster, look at you. Goodness gracious. And I think a gentle hint of that would, oh, man. Where do we get the bone marrow out of those bones? All right, well, look, what are these for? The strings, remember the strings? And you can see they've started to bust out of their strings. So the string is a good thing to do, right? I'll get the other ones. And then here's what we've got looking at us. Well, for a start, you've got bone marrow. Just the most delicious bone marrow right here, waiting to have a bite of. I'll do that now. Mm. And then I think we want to serve like this. This is very hot. So let me do this and do this. And do this. Let's put some polenta here. Oh, goodness gracious. And now, how is this going to happen? Oh, come on. Uh, the bone. I love the bone, though. Stay with me, bud. Come on. There's something about the presentation of this with the bone that makes me super happy. Oh. Okay. Now, spoon with the holes in it for some of these vegetables. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Just like that. And then a little bit more parsley. And then this guy, oh boy, can you believe it? Somebody asked me what's for dinner. What's, what's for, for dinner? dinner? Clowns, beef also buco is what's for dinner. And now we have a bite. And I'd be remiss if I didn't try a little bit of the polenta first, just with a little bit of vegetable on it. Oh boy. By the way, if you are old and have no teeth, this polenta should be what you eat from now on because it's fantastic. But really the star of the show is this. Come on, let's take a look at what's going on here. The old no teeth demographic is one of our largest, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens after a couple hours. That, mm. that, the little polenta, a little taste of polenta, some vegetable. That's what your hard work did. And by the way, the hardest part of your work was waiting to be able to have a bite. Two and a half hours, you can do it. Oh my God, the melting beef now with the polenta, the bone marrow from these massive bones has cooked and braised right along with everything else and added an amazing richness. I don't know what to say anymore. Just let me say thank you to the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, or as we call them around here, the, uh, the NCBA. Ladies and gentlemen of the NCBA, I applaud your work because it got us this. So thank you. Everybody at home, get on this. Let me tell you, could there be a more perfect holiday dish to serve your guests? No. And here's the genius part. It's in the oven way before they come and then all you have to do is bring it out like this. Make the polenta early, bring it back to life. A little extra butter is not gonna hurt anybody. Warm it up, oh my gosh. You will be the star of the holiday. I gotta go eat my face off right now. All right, everybody, so welcome back to Sam's Giveaway 2021. It's Wednesday, we have uh, two more uh, uh, things to give away today. And then of course, yes, more on Friday, so don't worry about it, there's many more chances. In fact, uh, on Friday, there'll be 32 more chances. So this giveaway, and I've got it written down right here. Uh, the first one is the Not Not Taco Party right here in San Diego, Not Not Tacos, lots of fun, we'll just have a ball. Goes to Sheila Adams. Congratulations, Sheila. Okay, and wait, the next one is the pit barrel cooker. Let's wait till you see how amazing ribs are when they come off the pit barrel. And this goes to Michael and Michelle Akins. Yes, congratulations. I'd applied with two hands, but I'm holding the, the thing with the other. All right, um, 
Sheila Adams and Michael and Michelle Aikens. Congratulations, you guys, and uh, hope you love the stuff. And again, uh, we'll put your names. You can reach out, infothecookingguy.com. We'll vet you, and you'll be on your way to eating and cooking fabulously. See you Friday. Tons of stuff. Tons.